and a mana and a rail and a iwi, then a koto, then a koto, then a koto kato. Anzac Day has become a time to honour all the men and women who served our nations and in doing so have made the supreme sacrifice. Today on April the 25th, we pause to remember those that served in World War I, those men of Australia and New Zealand who stepped into our history when they went ashore in Gallipoli. 2,700 died. But this campaign isn't just about the Australians and the New Zealanders. The courage, the endurance and the willingness to participate of the Nguyen soldiers can make this nation feel very proud. I want to just take this opportunity to remind ourselves, in particular the younger members that are here today, of the contribution that the men from this nation made to one of the most significant events in the history of the world. Nui offered men for the New Zealand Expeditionary Force as soon as the news of war reached the Pacific in 1915. A ship sailed from the shores of Alofi to Auckland in October with 150 men from this country on board. They trained at Narrow Neck, Narrow Neck Camp, as part of the 3rd Maori reinforcements until February 1916 when they embarked to Suez in Egypt. On their arrival in Egypt, the Nuans went into training at the New Zealand base camp. They became part of the newly formed New Zealand Maori Pioneer Battalion. This was an infantry unit trained to carry out all the labouring duties required by the army. In April 1916, the New Zealand troops were sent across the Mediterranean to a sector of the Western Front in northern France. Concerns had been expressed about sending Nuans to a cold climate, but the commander of the New Zealand Expeditionary Forces, General Godley, felt with the onset of spring the weather would be warm. It would be warm enough. So Nuans were included in the transfer. But spring in France in 1916 was particularly cold. On the bleak northern plains, the men began training again. Route marching, bayonet fighting practice and gas mask drills were the order of the day to the accompaniment of rumbles from the front line. In May 1916, the Pioneer Battalion moved into the combat zone. <clears throat> now much of the work had to be carried out at night. Trench digging was physically demanding and the Nuans were exposed to German artillery fire while doing so, which made it dangerous, obviously, as well. The main difficulty, however, was illness. By late May, 82% of the Nuans were hospitalised. They were withdrawn from the Western Front and sent to the main New Zealand convalescent hospital in the village of Hornchurch in Essex, England. The arrival of more than 100 Nuans in the small village had quite an impact on the local inhabitants, who went to great lengths to make them feel welcome. The presence of four Nuan graves in the village there in Hornchurch in Essex means there is a strong link between Hornchurch and Nguyen. <coughs> the main body of Nguyen soldiers returned to New Zealand in two troop, sh troop, ships, troop ships. As they sailed down the west coast of Africa, there were five further deaths. On arrival in Auckland, the men were kept in convalescent hospitals until they could be shipped back home to Nguyen. Of the 150 men that went to war from this nation, 17 did not return home. They died as Nguyen heroes, and they deserved to be remembered. We do so here today. <clears throat>